We have with us now Judy Sanderson, editor at South African Broadcasting Corporation and a member of South African National Editors. Uh, she has been in and out of uh, meetings. So uh, we will, uh, uh, I invite Judy for her uh, presentation and then we continue with this dialogue and comments and questions. Welcome Judy. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here and well done for having such an important session. Very briefly, I'll just give you a little bit of background from me, of me and Sanif, and then highlight our glass ceiling surveys, uh, one, both of which I've organ I arranged from one in 2006 and the other 10 to 12 years later on women in the media in South Africa. I uh, spent many years as a journalist and editor at the South African Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, often the first women in our newsroom and then the first women provincial editor responsible for news on Radio Zulu, Radio Lotus and East Coast Radio. So I, I came across a lot of obstacles in my way and I wanted to make sure that women coming after me didn't have the same experience. So I was a founding editor of the National Editors Forum in South Africa 25 years ago. And again, then there were very few women editors. Now I'm pleased to say far more, but a lot of the problems uh, some of the challenges still remain, and we have new problems like cyberbullying, of course, that have come into play. So I was also, uh, as a gender activist most of my life, I, I set up um, a rape crisis center about 35 years ago in the town of Peter Marisburg while I was still a reporter, and, and my sort of gender activism, initially separate from my media career, I realized I had to do a lot more gender activism within media as well. So what I'd like to uh, tell you a bit about is some of the findings of our glass ceiling survey. Oh, that uh, comes out a bit back to front, sorry. <laughs> uh, women in South African media houses. Um, some of the findings, sadly, were very similar to the one I organized in 2006, which was the first one we had, and we couldn't get any funding for it. So in the end, uh, myself and a, a fellow, a, an academic from a journalism school, helped me design the questions. And we sent them to as many women journalists and uh, editors and men as well, that we circulated it. And unfortunately, a lot of the issues that came up then, we're still finding in the survey that we did just two years ago. So, and of course, everything is exacerbated, as you know, by shrinking newsrooms, shrinking budgets, uh, the onset of digital media, and, 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 and still, and COVID, of course, the challenges around COVID. So I'll just highlight for you a, a couple of the things that came up and a couple of the recommendations from it. And I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, I've got time till uh, just before 11, so uh, depending on your schedule as well. So what we have found, as the South African National Editors Forum, we were formed, uh, there was no proper organization. There was a Black Editors Forum, which I didn't really fit into. I was a bit too pale. And there was a conference of editors that was all male. So I didn't quite fit into that either. And then broadcast editors were also excluded at that time. So for the first time, I felt I had a home. We launched South African National Editors Forum. Main aims to defend media freedom and to promote quality journalism. And from the start, I've been on the council for 25 years um, and in different positions, Secretary General, Chair of the Diversity Committee. And that is where um, I came up with the ideas to do a glass ceiling survey to find out exactly the extent of the problem and what could be done about it. Because women in newsrooms, there were more journalists coming in, but very few women editors, and especially black women editors. So um, the survey we discovered in this latest one that yes, there are a few more women managers, but still um, it's not parity with men. There were um, the, the, almost as many female reporters as male reporters. And the, news, the survey we did went right across uh, community media, public broadcast media, commercial media, uh, radio, print, online, etc. So it was a nice uh, spread. We found that the, the gender payback, a, a, pay, a pay gap had actually widened across the spectrum, um, that the policies in place, even if, if a, a, a company or newsroom had a gender policy, um, it was very limited. It didn't promote things like um, enabling um, women editors, for example, or women journalists, because, you know, we all used to go out middle of the night, you get called any time you do a news story. Didn't help promote sharing of responsibilities in the home or co-parenting or anything like that. The one thing that hadn't changed at all, daily sexual harassment, sometimes from peers, sometimes from um, editors or managers, 
and also a lot in the field. And of course, exacerbating that huge uh, new area of uh, problem area of cyber bullying, cyber messaging, where women in particular have been targeted in the last few years um, if they're outspoken about exposing corruption or if they're um, reporting on a rally, or on a court case, or on a, anywhere basically that a woman is out reporting and someone doesn't want her to be there or doesn't like uh, what she's saying, um, she not only can get physical harassment, but also verbal and, you know, Twitter, horrible tweets. I mean, really nasty ones. Freyal Hefferji in particular had terrible, terrible uh, cyberbullying with uh, pictures of uh, her face on, on, uh, on awful things. So Facebook, Twitter, I'm afraid, social media, absolute disaster in terms of uh, women journalists causing a lot of anxiety and stress to, to such an extent, actually, along with the COVID reporting that we at SANEF set up not only a media relief fund for journalists who lost their jobs, but an anxiety and stress line with the South African Anxiety and Depression Group, we set up an SMS helpline, and that's been used a lot for all sorts of things in the last year. And then, so other, what we have found is some hope here, a young re female reporters becoming more assertive and asserting their rights more, but still discriminatory practices, structural inequalities, cultural factors, prejudices, sexism, et cetera. So what we're looking at, a few key recommendations like trying to encourage uh, and promote more ownership by women of media. It's quite difficult in the corporate world, but certainly community media, radio and, and newspapers and, and uh, uh, NGOs, it, it is possible to ensure that um, and help promote and we're providing guidance by giving draft policies, what we call gender and diversity policies, not just um, a, a kind of uh, not just sexual harassment policies, for example, it, it's got to go wider into looking at career enhancement, training, access to training, a newsroom, uh, climate, you know, are they encouraging or discouraging, etc. cetera. Um, so really stamping out ways in which to stamp out the sexism, the bullying and, and giving women space to speak out and men, uh, monitoring and reporting the trends and, and what is happening and obviously closing the wage gap. So that, that, that's um, a couple of the findings from the glass ceiling, latest glass ceiling survey. And some of the things that I found as a sort of pioneering editor where I had the first newsroom in the country that had a proper mix of our diverse newsroom. I made it a, a goal of mine to have uh, almost equal male and female. Because when I came into the newsroom, uh, there was only me and, and, and then one other woman. And when, um, as editor, um, I made my management team. I made sure we had Zulu speakers. We had South Africans, of, you know, Indian South Africans, half women, half men, as it were, in my uh, management team of, of, of nine. Um, well, eight plus me. <laughs> so one extra woman, if you like. And uh, obviously in my newsroom too, to make sure I had a good mix of skills and life experience, because especially with our apartheid past, people had such different life experiences. And how can you have and uh, uh, enrich your newsroom uh, if, you, if you can't draw on all these different life experiences for your audience and properly reflect um, daily life and challenges um, that, that everybody has, not just sections of people. And that's another thing. Some of the tips I used to give, if you set up a panel um, of experts or do a box pops, always make sure you have a mix, male, female, young, old, rural and urban. Language must always be inclu inclusive, not when you're editing, you make sure you don't use terms like fireman, but fight, a firefighter, for example. In the newsroom, I used to, I learned that from my um, gender activism uh, days, uh, rotate, if you have a staff meeting, rotate the chair so that men and women get a chance to chair and take minutes and, and encourage leadership, be flexible and ensure access to training courses, very important. Those are just some of the things. So let me stop there because I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I'm very happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Judy, thank you so much. And you have sort of uh, re-emphasized on what we strongly very believe in at, at CNS at least. And you were talking of that gender balance, which I find missing not only in media, but elsewhere also. And, uh, and we have to really force ourselves to think 
as you said that uh, you even you know i have had i have uh, be, uh, listened to webinars and uh, online discussions say on international women's day and with very well meaning people organizing it but not a single female speaker there or, or, no, or, or, it's scary. Or, or. <laughs> it's so scary when people just don't yes. think. And also, yes, you find you have to keep reminding people because yes. they forget. Yes, we forget. And uh, very often they said, well, it was not our intention, but, but we couldn't but, find one. But of course, you'll find so many if you really look for them. So uh, I, I think that th those are very important points which you have raised. And uh, surely you must have... Uh, uh, brought about a lot many changes and now there must be more gender balance in the newsroom than what was there 25 years ago. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. But then it has to be kept, you know, it, it can be eroded. You can have yes. a endogenist yes. editor yes. and it yes. could be eroded. So we have to keep a BDI on everything. Yes. Right, right. So the, uh, very good. And I think we have some questions there for you. I'll just, uh, let right. me just check and then you will find out. Yes, Avaki uh, Kuti Thamin, she says, uh, uh, thank you, Maitri and Judy, for sharing important insight. Uh, Judy, thanks for mentioning race. Uh, thank you for mentioning racism and gender cross connection. May I ask if racism is still uh, fueling gender inequality in South Africa? Um, yes, in some, in some instances it does, and that's why in my survey I specifically asked what additional uh, obstacles, if you like, were uh, young black women experiencing, and what we found too is that black men, um, I'm including black as Indian colored and black, if you like, it, it's very difficult, everyone has different ideas of how to group people, we, I try to get away from groups, but you have to sometimes, is, is that they advance faster than women still. In other words, black men advance faster than black women in, in, in their careers. So there's still that kind of a more, it's easier for men. Um, the prevailing climate is still more patriarchal um, and, and, and race issues still uh, do crop up, absolutely, unfortunately. And then some people who want to cause trouble deliberately uh, stir them up as if you, you don't have enough to deal with you know so you do get different agendas you get political agendas things that get a lot uh, politicized a lot and you have to really keep uh keep keep a, keep 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 a close kind of make sure your vision and your path are very clear to everyone and that you don't take any nonsense and that you're there to uh, ensure that every individual can fulfill their potential and that anyone who has additional obstacles, we look at getting rid of those additional obstacles out of the way. Uh, sometimes racism, sometimes sexism, sometimes, sometimes people, for example, transgender people, there are all these issues, D disability. Yeah. Anyone who's slightly different from the male norm, basically that was in the past, uh, you always had a challenge to break through. So now we have to make sure that it's not just gender, actually it is diversity. The people, everyone must have an equal opportunity. And we have to really level the playing field. And it, it's taking, I have to say, the second glass ceiling, I was a bit despondent at first because gosh, I expected more to have changed. Um, on the other hand, it's good to see many feisty women and some men really pushing for change and making a difference. So we try and hold our best practice. And certainly I will uh, get the Sanif office, uh, we, we'll send, uh, uh, um, to, to Bobby, uh, the, the actual glass ceiling survey got a PowerPoint on it. We'll send that through to you so you can share it. Yes, yes. yes In fact, I think it could be on, it's on our website actually. So everyone can see uh, sanef.org.za. All our documents are there. In fact, there's a lot of stuff there. Okay. Uh, so please have a look. Sanef, you know, www.sanef, S A N E F, dot org dot Z A. Okay, okay, thank you, because I think this is very, very insightful, it will just help us. And uh, I just wanted to share here quickly, Judy and others, that uh, in uh, 2012, that's way back, and we at CNS, we just uh, did a small trial, a, a small study, uh, not about uh, women being in the newsroom, uh, but about how women were presented in the news published in the papers. So uh, we did uh, a news monitoring of the first page of English newspapers 
chosen randomly from five south in uh, south asian countries uh, the times of india new delhi uh, the news uh, the news from islamabad pakistan new nation dhaka bangladesh kathmandu post and the daily mirror uh, from colombo and we had five indicators i'll just quickly go through the results we got it was uh, it uh, it was a very basic uh, sort of a survey you can call it or whatever uh, how many female journalists got news stories with their bylines on the front page of the english newspapers compared to the male counterparts uh, we had 30% for india sri lanka 15% pakistan 9.5% nepal 3.5% and bangladesh 0% although there was a female who was leading the country who was at the head of the country but uh, that that was the then the second indicator was how many front page news headlines carried names of female newsmakers compared to those featuring male newspapers maximum in bangladesh 22% india 17% pakistan 16% sri lanka 15% and nepal 0% how many female experts were quoted in the news which were covered on the first page a uh, front page women quoted as experts on front page news were maximum in sri lanka but that too was just 17% followed by bangladesh 15% india 12% pakistan 4% nepal 2% how many front page news content featured women compared to those that featured men in the news women mentioned by name maximum in sri lanka 44% india 20% nepal 6% bangladesh 20% pakistan 10% how many photographs of women were there on front page compared to those of men sri lanka 31% bangladesh 23% india 18% nepal 17% pakistan 10% so that was wow. the front page coverage which it was uh, i wouldn't call it a very very robust thing but we just scanned the first page pages of these newspapers well you know i'm so glad you raised it because the reason i did the first glass ceiling survey in 2006 which was my my uh, longtime friend uh, Mary Papaya and I yeah. managed to persuade the um, mostly male editors of the National Editors Forum at the time to focus have our AGM theme called engendering the media in 2003 and we had gender links uh, an NGO present and say only 17% of women are featured on average in our media it was a horrific statistic and most of the time as victims or as 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 prostitutes kind of you know the kind of two categories either a murder victim or or a sex worker and and, and my goodness it was so even the men were shocked and that's how we got the impetus to really start doing a lot more what we call corrective action uh, having a whole strategy from sanef to take out into the newsroom to all the editors also uh, looking at news content much more importantly not just the news composition in terms of gender but the content of what we're covering so um that has helped a lot so the surveys giving the fact seem to help to touch a nerve for even some of the editors who weren't very interested um because then they realize we say look you're missing more than half your audience you're not serving them you know wake up and this is money too in a commercial environment um if you're not serving your audience they'll go elsewhere so it's a business decision too you know So yes, I'm glad you raised that. It's quite an eye opener if you can get someone, even a journalism school or some researchers, to to do uh, just some some research, some surveys of how women are portrayed in the media, the images, the content, like you got. It it helps, and then you have a seminar or a workshop or a conference. It raises the issue again, which we it seems we need to do all the time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, there is a question for both you and Matri, uh, Judy. That do male bosses feel threatened with your decision making leadership oh well i i've have had <laughs> yes i i a mix i've had one or two have been good mentors but when uh, govan reddy who was our head of radio at sabc in 93 he asked me to go and head news um uh, because my newsroom was the most transformed in the country just before our, our obviously big 1994 elections and 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 95 as well with local government um anyway when i was working in johannesburg first of all um uh, uh, some australian editors were helping do some research about where the problems were in radio news and radio and how they could be fixed govern had um, invited them to come and look and in in their research he had interviewed some of the editors because they were mainly men and some of them said oh i talked too much uh, <laughs> women editors talk too much and uh, my first editor who appointed me uh, 
<laughs> ironically, as the only woman reporter in the Durban newsroom at the time, said over his dead body, would there ever be a woman editor? And when I became acting editor-in-chief of all SABC radio news, when Govan appointed me for three months to, to um, fix the structures and, and change a whole lot of things, uh, make democratize, if you like, um, and professionalize, because it wasn't very professional. Well, um, he actually came and asked me for some freelance work. <laughs> I was really ironic. But, and, and then uh, you get the sort of backhanded compliment, like um, um, when I was appointed, it was a, a, the, the male manager in KwaZulu Natal appointed me as the first woman editor in his uh, structure. And he said, Basically, he said, oh, I've got balls. Now, that to him was a compliment. <laughs> I've got balls, a lot of them he didn't have balls. <laughs> I suppose because I was a fighter and I spoke up and everything. But, you know, so it's a mixed bag. <laughs> you get, you do, I've got resentment. I tell you what, from the white, the older white men in the newsroom when I was made editor, I could feel a lot of resentment until I really got going and, and tried to bring them along but they were difficult. But when I went back to my small little office, I went from journalist to editor in quite a leap. Um, uh, I had a sign from my Zulu male colleagues who I'd worked side by side with. I'd, I'd, I'd organized charity campaigns for salaries. I had sued the SABC for an unfair labor practice because women and, and uh, men and women of color and women as well, all, all women were discriminated against in the benefits. You didn't get the housing loan, uh, subsidy, etc. And I managed to win that. So I, they worked with me on, on campaigns as well for staff uh, equality. And I'd worked with them out in the field as reporters. Um, so I came to my door and there was a big sign that put up saying Viva Iron Lady, okay. which I suppose whether you like Margaret Thatcher or not was a bit of a compliment at the time. <laughs> so yeah, a mixed bag. Okay, uh, Matri, what are your thoughts on this? What would you like to share? Uh, actually, I, think, I think Judy has uh, uh, put it rather succinctly and uh, she's, uh, you know, sort of way more senior. She's headed so many newsrooms. So uh, so men getting threatened by, by, by female presence there, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, in my case, um, it's, it's, it's mostly like I have had men who have been like rather senior to me. But, uh, but, you know, they have ended up telling me things like, uh, so when I've demanded to know that, you know, why my story was killed, or why was it not published, what happened in backhanded ways, um, one of my editors told me, um, why do you bother you get your salary. And, uh, uh, and it was not necessarily a sexist taunt, but I mean, he could have said the same thing to anyone who stood up to him. Uh, uh, for, for us uh, as, as female or male reporters, it becomes very important to stand up to these people who then rather, you know, like suppress us as juniors and uh, show us the monetary argument and tell us to just shut up because we got our salaries. And, and I actually stood up back to him and I told him um, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, is an editor supposed to talk like that? Are you supposed to talk like that as an editor? Uh, then what is the difference between you and the marketing guy, you know? And, uh, and he was very, uh, he was very taken aback, um, you know, quiet. So since then, uh, there was this another case where uh, the same fellow uh, was, was uh, you know, sort of uh, asking my friend whether she, he could drop her somewhere. And uh, she sort of said that, no, but I'm waiting for Maitri. So she was actually waiting for me. And then he ended up calling me, uh, you know, a grandmother, you know. So he ended up uh, uh, telling her that, uh, is she your grandmother? You know, so there was this entire impression um, that these male editors would build of females, you know, who, who speak out uh, or, you know, to be to something like Judy said, you know, the iron lady or, you know, someone having balls uh, or, 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 you know, like attributing it to a mother or, you know, those kind of um, sexist comments. So, uh, so that's something which is very easy for uh, male editors to make. And uh, it is something that uh, you know, like 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 females in the in the newsroom have to live with. Uh, there have also been uh, times when, uh, you know, just just in order to avoid the male gaze, uh, women in my newsroom have 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 dressed more conservatively when when they necessarily didn't have to, right? And so uh, uh, so you know, if you'd been wearing like a short skirt or you've been wearing like a sleeveless top, you know, and and you find that that there are some threatening elements in the newsroom, then you know you and and this is happening in a city like Mumbai, 
which is so liberal with you know its culture and and you know people are like very very carefree there and uh, and so i think threatening male elements in the newsroom can have like a lot of detrimental effects uh, in many ways uh, uh, on on the culture of the newsroom uh, uh, you know especially editors who are not gender sensitive or female friendly yeah, yeah uh, okay thank you thank you very much but we have rita vidyadana from uh... Uh, who was former editor of Jakarta Post from Indonesia. Rita, would you like to share your experience on this? Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you, Judy. Thank you, Matri. This is uh, uh, what Judy said is like, uh, I experienced myself. I joined, uh, I joined the Jakarta Post early uh, in 19, uh, 1987. Uh, 1987, where the concept of gender was strange, and I, 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 I was just four of 50, four female journalists uh, out of 50 male journalists at that time. Uh, my, my publication is English, uh, uh, the one of the largest English daily in Indonesia. So uh, at that time, uh, female journalists uh, was rare and I was just four of them. So I was stationed uh, as a business reporter first, and then city and national. So everybody, all the male uh, reporter, uh, editor, just look down on uh, uh, our capability as uh, female journalists to pursue our news. Um, but, uh, uh, I, 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 I never gave up hope and I never uh, succumbed to their uh, stereotyping. Uh, so at that time, I was, so, uh, I was regarded as a pushy, stubborn journalist uh, because I'm a woman. Uh, uh, at that time, I was uh, changed my position to become a features and Sunday editors. Uh, I don't. I didn't see it as a, a degrading my 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 positions, but I saw it as my uh, strong platform to promote uh, gender equality in my. Uh, uh, I I I create a, a health and women issue uh, sectors and and in 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 my Sunday uh, edition. I push forward uh, news on uh, prominent women who have uh, who have uh, so many uh, accomplishments in in the society. So uh, I think I'm very happy now to see a lot, a lot more of uh, young women editors and journalists. When I was uh, in the 19. Uh, 80 and early 1990s uh, when I, I got married at that time and then I, I was pregnant and then everybody called me a breastfeeding journalist with self sexist and I didn't care. Mm, but I pushed uh, my editors, my management to create a room for breastfeeding journalists. So this is, I think, uh, I don't see it as a, 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 a discouragement for me, but it's like fueling my uh, power to do more for women journalists in my uh, newsroom. So I think uh, the newsroom now is very, very uh, um, balanced uh, in terms of uh, the number of uh, women and male journalists, as Maitri said. But in my time, uh, in my early time, it was so hard, like Judy said, that to get up uh, on a higher level without being stubborn, without being called stubborn or being called pushy. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to see uh, so many fresh women journalists, so many uh, fresh executive in the media organization here in Indonesia uh, so I'm glad uh, I will, uh, uh, I'm, I'm part of this conversation now. Thank you so much, Soba. Thank you very much. And the conversation will continue. 